Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookish Realm. So this is a different angle. I decided that I wanted to try filming in front of these shelves for a couple of videos. I think that I like standing up, but then I get tired of standing up and maybe because I've spent most of my channel sitting down that that's what I'm used to. So welcome back to our weekly reading log volume three. We have done three of these so far, which is great. Remember, I did last week's. Last week's kind of exploded a little bit, I think, because, of course, I talked about Spare by Prince Harry, and I know a lot of people were looking specifically for that review or have been looking specifically for reviews of that book, even though that whole video was not dedicated towards Spare. I think most people gravitated towards it because of that. So this is actually the fourth, this will be upcoming the fourth week, was this the fourth week of January? Yeah, because January has this weird kind of half, like fifth week or something like that. Yeah, anyway, like I was saying, as I was saying, this is the third log, even though it technically would be week four. I did not read as much this week as I've read in weeks past. And that's simply because of the fact that this week was a lot for me in terms of what I had on my schedule and so I wasn't able to dedicate as much time to reading as I had done in the previous weeks of the year. Don't mind me, I am looking down because I am pulling up my Goodreads to let you know exactly what I'm going to be doing or what I'm going to be talking about, I should say that instead. So remember that I do not cover any comics, graphic novels, or manga during these weekly logs. All of those are definitely included on my graphic novel manga and comics channel which I will link in the card symbol above. So this week I read a total of five books with one of those being a manga title. I don't even have to create really a separate section because usually it's a list of stuff. This week it was not a list and the title that I ended up finishing this week was Laid Back Camp Volume 3. I'll be talking a little bit more about the series in my currently reading section of this video. The other four books are the ones that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So this one should be a little bit shorter. Okay, so the first one that I ended up finishing was one that I talked about in the weekly reading log of volume two, and that was The Mountain Sing by Nguyen Phan Quay Mai. And this is her first book that was written in English. She is a well-known poet and traditionally writes everything in Vietnamese. This is one of those books that is enjoyable for people who like really like pachinko and homegoing. If you like those intergenerational family sagas, then this will be one that you pick up. It is a kind of side-by-side -side narrative where we follow a granddaughter and a grandmother through their perspective of what it's been like to live in Viet Vietnam based on a whole bunch of events that have happened. So we get the perspective of the grandmother that takes place in the 1920s and then we get the perspective of the granddaughter that starts taking place in the 1970s during the height of Vietnam. I really enjoy this and a lot of times I just don't have the words to describe how I feel about this book and I think that it's just one of those books that is beautifully written. It captures a different perspective that we don't always get. I always say that the people who write the history books are the winners of the wars and so a lot of the perspectives in terms of me personally what I've been taught about Vietnam has been from a very western centric perspective and what the U.S. was doing in Vietnam to to begin with but I've never read a text where I am getting the perspective of Vietnamese individuals who are impacted by the decisions that others have made and so in this one we cover some major events like the land reform the great hunger the Vietnam War and it's told through these two lenses and these two lenses create kind of a sense of interconnectedness of the family members I will say that this one is not an easy one to read it has a lot of content warnings for death on page, rape, violence, heavy, 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 heavy violence on page, a lot of discrimination, a lot of turmoil that is experienced by the grandmother and the granddaughter in this. However, what I do like that Maya did in this book is she interweaves hope. And so while we have our characters going through so much stuff, I mean, it's kind of like hit after hit after hit after hit. We never lose that essence or sense of hope. And I really, really expect, 
respect, not expect, I respect the author for making that decision to weave it in. And that's not to say that she diminishes any trauma that these characters go through or the trauma is not addressed. It is definitely front and center, wide open for all readers to see, but I do like that hope was woven into that, that no matter what happened, they, they kept going. And it's human resilience on page, but this is one that's difficult to read, but very informative, beautifully and poetically written, which not surprising here as our author is a world renowned poet, but it was it was great, y'all. I think she has a second book coming out in March, I believe. And so I'm really looking forward to reading that one. I ended up giving this one five out of five stars. Next book that I finished is one that I'm not gonna talk about because you've already gotten a video review of this one, which I'm gonna take my bookmark out of it at this point. And that is Fat Angie. So I read Fat Angie as part as the first book in my band book and diary series that I am attempting to do once a month. More realistically, it'll probably happen every other month. So this book follows a character by the name of Fat Angie who is going through it all. So she has a very abusive and neglective mother, an absent father, a brother who bullies her, and a sister that has gone missing during the war in Iraq, and she can't handle it all, and she attempts to commit suicide during a pep rally. And we basically enter the story at the point in which she is trying to go back to school and try to make some type of normality out of the whole situation but she's bullied extensively and just treated horribly there is some glimmer of hope with another main character but it just wasn't the, the it wasn't worth what our main character goes through it just is a very very heavy book I feel like Angie just went through too much and there's not really a support system there. Adults don't really kick in the way that they should. They don't support Andy, Angie the way that we, they should. There is a coach that kind of steps in to rectify in some ways some of the situations but really doesn't hold our main bully accountable for every anything because her mother works for the PTA. It's just... This book was published in 2013. It very much so is of its time. This is not one that I think I would recommend greatly to people who are looking for books with positive fat representation in it. This one has a lot of content warnings for it, but I do definitely talk about all of this in greater detail in that vlog, so I'll make sure that I link that up in the card symbol above. In that vlog, I did not give it a rating because I wasn't sure where I was sitting with my rating, but when I went back and wrote my review after I finished doing the vlog, I ended up giving it 2.5 stars. The next book that I have is one, ironically, that I can't even talk about, and that is Peter Pan <laughs> by J.M. Barry. This one is one that I decided to pick up because I am continuing on with the video series that I started last year, and that video series is, is this book problematic, which I'm revisiting children's lit due to the ALA's decision, which is the American Library Association, their decision to change the kind of like the achievement, it's kind of like a lifetime achievement award in children's literature, but it used to be the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award. And after everything that happened in 2020, they reconsidered what that award title meant because of the problematic nature of the Little House on the Prairie series. And so I decided to kind of do a deep dive into revisiting some children's series and seeing how they hold up from a 21st century perspective and how we can have more open conversations and dialogue about problematic children's books and how to have those conversations with youth about their place in time in history and in literature and also provide read likes. So my aim also is to discuss these books but to provide read likes at the end for those who may be looking for similar themes, similar vibes, or even maybe some good retellings of the works. So I'm not going to talk about this one in detail here because I should have a video of this one going up on Tuesday of this week. This will be going up on a Sunday and on Tuesday you should be getting the review of Peter Pan so I don't want to spoil too much of that video. I will say that I did end up giving it one star and it's not completely because of the problematic nature of the book. And the last book that I ended up reading this month was 
was Screwed, which is the first book in the Preston Brothers series by Nicole Falls. This is a black indie romance. I am diving my way back into going through all of the black indie romances that I have tagged on Amazon or saved in a private list in which I'm just looking at new releases, authors that I wanted to try out. And this was one that I've wanted to try. Nicole Falls was one of the first black indie romance writers that I had read and so I had read a whole lot of her publication list when I first started reading black indie romance and I for some I just stopped because I was exploring so much and I did not go back to Nicole Falls so I think this year I do want to revisit going back to a lot of her work but Screwed is the first, I believe, in a duology that follows these two brothers who work for this network, this company that is, I think, kind of a play on HGTV, but make it all black, which I appreciate it. I think I like romances with home renovation themes. I don't know what that is. This is the second one that I've read with those themes, and each time I'm like, I really am digging the home renovation. Now, granted, this one does not fixate on that element so strongly. I think the second one may. This one doesn't as much, but we do follow this company where we meet our two characters, CG and Will. And Will had already been working with this company with his twin brother. And as we enter the beginning of the novel, we find out that CG has been added to the network as a front runner in this new perspective that they're taking she meets with clients and specially creates boom boom rooms for them so playrooms essentially or just spaces where people can spice up their sexual relationships with their partners and she does it in a very tactful and tasteful way to the point that they loved her vibe and energy and invited her to do the show for the network. Now Will initially has a huge problem with it because he's like oh you know you add this show to the network it's basically going to bring the value down. So it starts off as an enemies to lovers. There's an enemies to lovers type of trope going on there because Will cannot stand her but also has this really strong attraction for her which I found really really interesting but he he does not like her at first and she doesn't like him. What I loved about this one was the role reversal element so we have kind of a touch of BDSM going on in this book and I love that CG was this very confident and take charge type of heroine. We definitely see Will kind of have to follow her lead in this one and not just sexually I mean just in how they interact and in general because CG was like I'm not about to take any bullshit from anybody including you and so that essentially means that I if you're going to approach me you have to approach me correctly when he tries to rectify a situation and make her rectify it I guess make her feel good about being a part of the network he does it in a way that she doesn't appreciate and she checks him on it completely she's like nah if you're gonna come correct you you gotta come correct you can't come to me like that and so we definitely get to see the relationship build over time they each have their different issues where will is just very hesitant about how he's approaching the situation because he's gotten into a romantic situation with someone who had worked for the company before and he's very nervous about that and it impacts him and rightfully so. I think that they both have an appropriate level of nervousness about starting a workplace romance because this company has spent a great deal of time making sure that black voices are heard and seen on these TV shows that basically have that theme of home improvement and, and realtor and, and stuff like that. So I, I appreciate that and we get to see that through their relationship. Actually I'm really excited to pick up the second one because I think that this one did a really great job leading into or setting up that second book so I'm excited to see what our twin brothers romance is going to be. I think that one's going to be like a childhood friends to lovers I think there's a little bit, I think there may be a slight miscommunication that one, I don't know. I'm just basing it off of what I've got from this first one. Okay, so now for the section where I tell you what I'm currently reading, which is a lot. Now technically I could have finished, there was one I could have finished before I sat down to film this one and I didn't do it. 
I am currently reading The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which I never thought I would read it, but here I am. Reading The Cruel Prince by <laughs> Holly Black, and I am 95% into that book. So I could have finished it before I sat down to film this, but I was like, I'm just not, I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to rush it at all. I have a couple of audiobooks that I'm currently reading, but I'm not going to put them here because... Well, I won't even say I'm currently reading them. I have a couple of audiobooks that I have slated for next week, going into this upcoming week, but I'm not going to even stress over, I'm not going to stress about it because at this point, I don't even know what I feel comfortable reading just yet, you know, it's kind of a mood reading thing. But I do have some physical books that I'm currently working my way through that I want to show to you, and most of these are children's lit, actually. All of these are children's lit in three manga. So I do want to, and I grabbed the wrong volume, but these two volumes will be fine. I do want to continue my read of Laid Back Camp. I am trying to catch up on the series and my library has all the volumes up to the most recent volume. So I do need to read the most, um, not the most recent, I need to read the ones that I currently have checked out. Now, I'm on volume four, this is volume six, but I was looking for, I don't know where I have volume five, it's probably upstairs or in my book bag somewhere. But I do want to continue with that series this week, probably will continue with it sometime this evening. I'm extremely behind in my One Piece read. <laughs> I'm not going to be caught up by the end of this month, but I do need to make a, a small dent, at least halfway through by the end of this month. I'm hoping that, I mean, it's like three days left in the month at this point. Well, two by the time that this goes up. I'm hoping that I can get to volume five by the end of the month, but if not, we'll reevaluate, come back to it, and see where we are in February. But I am enjoying it. I'm about 89 pages into volume two. It's, it's, I see why everybody loves it. I see why people enjoy it. The next one I have is a children's fiction book that is translated from Spanish, and this is called Different, a story of the Spanish Civil War. Um, this takes place during between 1936 and 1939. So this follows two kids, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old, who are dealing with the absence of a father who left due to his political beliefs. This one has some really, really pretty illustrations in it. I was looking for some more uh, translated works to pick up in the meantime of me working on my Around the World Reading Challenge. And so I thought I would start with some children's books and this is one that's, like I said, been translated from Spanish. I want to pick up the next installment in the Magic Treehouse series because I did read the first one and talked about that in the last weekly one. These take me like 30 minutes to read. Absolutely nothing. No time to read. Also started reading The 13th Treehouse. I haven't even marked this as currently reading on Goodreads yet. This is by Annie Griffiths and Terry Denton. This is an interesting little series that follows these two, what appears to be kids. <laughs> but I'm not sure because the characters are named for the writer and illustrator of the book. So I don't know if it's supposed to be like kitty versions of themselves or what. But this is a really quick read. It's silly. It's... It's definitely great for kids who like stuff like Dork Diaries, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, because it has like the text and the illustrations in it. And they have this treehouse that's 13 levels and all they do is sit around all day and write books and illustrate them. And it's funny because there's this evil character that is their publisher coming to ask them for a deadline. So it's, it's interesting. There's a lot um, on the back of this one there's eight in the series. I think there's more at this point, but at this point of publication of this one, it has eight on the back going up to 104 story treehouse. So I'll slowly wait, slowly make my way through the series. I'm just reading a lot of series. Let's just be honest. I also plan to get to the next installment in the Mercy Watson series. So we have Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride. This is the second book. As y'all know, when I talked about this last week, I love the illustrations in this. I think they're so rich in color and funny and capture the emotions of the characters so perfectly. So I'm excited to pick that one up. I didn't realize that that one had it was an award-winning title. And the last one that I'm super excited to get to is the third book in the Desmond Cole Ghost Patrol series. This is Surf's Up's Creepy Stuff, which it's ghosts, I think, that are in the ocean. 
So yeah, they're going, it's a beach trip, and they find, um, maybe it's not a ghost, but maybe it's just like a, a creature that they find. These also don't take me very long to read, so I think honestly, most definitely before the month ends, I could get through all of these because, like I said, children's books, which is nothing wrong with the fact that they're children's books, but they take me absolutely no time to read and we'll see how I do with my manga reads. As always y'all if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content from me hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notification. If you're looking for ways to support this channel all the links are down below and as always I'll be back with another video soon. Let me know in the comments below what you read this week and what you're looking forward to reading in the upcoming week.